And what McKee argues is basically what Vladimir Propp argued 80 years earlier, which is that there are seven fundamental stories. Propp argued that there are seven fundamental stories in Russian folk tales, and McKee argued that in uh, cinema there are seven fundamental stories. And that uh, every movie that's ever made is a retelling of one of these seven stories. Some of you might be familiar with this idea. Yeah? Some of you, it might be new to you, which is fine. David Lamb didn't agree with Vladimir Propp and Robert McKean. David Lamb said to us on this uh, summer's afternoon in 2000, that in the entire history of Western dramatic literature, which would incorporate television drama, cinema, and theatre, the entire history of Western dramatic literature, there is one story. And that every play, and every film, and every TV show that has ever been written is fundamentally a retelling of the same story. Just get a film or a play in your head, the story of which you know really, really well. And I'd like you to think of the five most elemental events that happen in that story, without which the story of the film or the play would make no sense. And to write one of each of these events on one of your pieces of paper. So on each of the five pieces of paper you have one event. Fundamental uh, events or no events? No, no, yeah. Uh, the events which are so fundamental yeah. to the story yeah. that without them, if you took them out of okay. the story, okay. Okay. the story would make no sense. The absolute basic bits, yeah? But think in terms of events, things that happen, rather than states of being. This is the important bit. Share the three stories, yeah? And then, if you uh, were to imagine that you were David Lamb, and you had to uh, define one narrative structure that described the three stories, in your group, what would you come up with? All right, that's the task of the group to describe all three stories in one template. This is what I'm going to do: is I'm going to hear all four of your answers, and then see if it's possible to merge your four answers into one, and then. I will tell you what David Land said, or my, well, my bastardised version of David Land. I mean, immensely indebted to him, he's a really important figure in British theatre and increasingly so in my career. But I can't, I, I just want, I've spoken to him about this workshop and he can't remember doing it. <laughs> it's a really important point for me, and the whole thesis of today, is that there is a difference between a narrative and a structure. Yeah, and that uh, what you, what I'm going to work towards later in the day, is that what you can do is you can imagine a narrative and then you decide how to structure it, how to dramatize it. Yes, so it's absolutely possible that different artists, the guys who made The Matrix, Alfred Hitchcock, uh, and Fassbinder, have taken a narrative and then been playful or inventive or explosive in the structure. I think that's great, but I would suggest that's an issue of structure, not of narrative. And the narrative describing the story might be described as this so far, unless you want to refine it before we move over here. Uh, so, there is an environment in which a character exists, and then you've got something happens to that central character to change their life. And you started with a meaningful meeting that brings up objectives to the protagonist. 
Now, I would suggest that that describes that. Yes. Yes? So I think we can keep with that. Okay. Yeah? You add some really interesting new things into it that I want to run by this group and these three people over here. Yeah? Um, they try and get something. The protagonist um, the, uh, uh, the brings up the objectives of the uh, protagonist. The protagonist confronts obst obstacles to that objective and makes, uh, and makes them harder. What did I mean by that? Shit. Um, because basically we've got the same thing. They try and get something. They confront obstacles. It's just the obstacles get harder as they go along. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Are, you, are you happy, uh, Ava's group, with the notion that obstacles escalate in difficulty as the journey progresses? Sure. Yeah? Cool. Great. Uh, that's great. How are you feeling about that over here in the difficult corner? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is this is what this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go very slowly through what we seem to have reached at the point we've reached at, and then I'm going to tell you what David Land says, and we can compare them, and we can you can talk about them and see what this is doing to your head. And then I've got a few more things I want to do. So what we've come up with, and I'm going to go very slowly. If it would help your brain to write it out, because we're all writers, so we're all aware of the psychological impact of writing something down, then do. But I will photocopy this and give it to you. So if you don't want to write it down, you don't need to. Um, and as a teacher, the only value in this for me is, does it help me help the writers I'm working with make their play better? And I can only say the amount of times that either I've been working with a writer on their play, they've given me a first draft of their play, or a second draft of their play, uh, and they're struggling with it, or there's something about it that for me isn't quite working, or the amount of times I've been working on a play, and that's something I haven't got quite right. And I've gone back to this model and tested the play against this model either having written a first draft, or a second draft, or a third draft, or not having written it at all, having just planned it in my head, and tested it against this model, and it's revealed something about the play that has helped me make the play better, is Legion.